daybreak on Point Judith Pond in South Kingstown. A touch of fog kisses the salt water on this cool summer morning. Our crew heads south. Their assignment, catch and tag sharks in Rhode Island waters for research. Before their encounter with sharks, They have to stop to gather important information. Sitting just off two Rhode Island beaches are acoustic receiver buoys, which listen for pings from tagged fish. It's a fairly new effort between the Atlantic Shark Institute and the Rhode Island DEM. That's the receiver. So it looks like a thermos. And that's what's detecting all of these sharks. So anything with an acoustic tag in it is getting recorded and kept in that receiver. The information is downloaded from the buoy through the Bluetooth to a laptop on our boat. We've got 418 detections, so we have 418 different animals that have been detected in this site. There are 30 of these acoustic receivers in Rhode Island waters, a technology first deployed in the state in 2019, and they can detect all sorts of animals, including sharks. Yeah, it's actually pretty interesting. So last year on July 2nd, we got a great white in one of the fish traps here, and one of our partners tagged it. And we actually picked that up last season around Block Island. It was a young of the year, it was actually a young white shark. And we checked our receivers last week, and that same shark has appeared again. John Dodd of the Atlantic Shark Institute said that white shark went south for the winter and came right back. And they are studying whether it lives around there or was just passing through. Our tagging program with the white sharks primarily focuses on young of the year, which are the newborns and juveniles. And the reason we focus on them is that's what we have here. The larger ones, the subadults and adults, they go to the Cape to wrestle with the seals. These guys aren't large enough to do that yet, so they play it safe until they get to that size. So everything we're catching and tagging, predominantly young of the year and white sharks, and luckily we were able to tag eight great whites last summer. Should folks be wary about getting in Rhode Island waters? I wouldn't be wary about getting in Rhode Island waters. I think what we're doing is we're really probably confirming what's been here the whole time. I don't think this is a new phenomenon. I think we're just able with this new technology, the tagging technology, acoustic receivers, we're able to say, guess what's here? Guess what's been here? We raced to a second buoy off Scarborough Beach. This is my GPS unit that sits on the top. We have 254 detections on this. Individual detections, which is over 400,000 pings. So we've got a lot of animals here. This is right off of Scarborough Beach. It's important to note, not all of those animals are sharks. Many other tagged fish pass by the receiver, and that's still valuable information for researchers. So for example, we've had situations where folks that are researching in the Chesapeake Bay have called us delighted because there are striped bass we're actually detecting that they thought never made it out of the Chesapeake Bay. And now they find out they're here, they're in Rhode Island, they're safe. So why did it take that long to get Rhode Island acoustic receivers? Yeah, that's a great question. The issue is they're expensive, they're $4,000 each, but we decided it's something we needed to do, and we found a great partner in Rhode Island DEM to, to do it with us. Worldwide, there are more than 500 different species of sharks. In Rhode Island waters, we typically see 12 to 15 different species. If you go out, you can run into a great white shark, you can run into a poor beagle shark, you run into a mako shark. We've got blue sharks, which are gorgeous, long pectoral fins. Black tip sharks, which are usually a warm water shark. Spinner sharks, occasional tiger shark, hammerhead sharks. To find the sharks, we set a course far offshore, southeast of Block Island, until we started to see signs of life. Right now, this water is reading very well. We've got a ton of data on the screen. We've got whales, we've got large whales, we've got small whales, we've got a lot of birds working. So we're gonna stop here. So these birds will dive and pick off your bait. <laughs> <laughs> so we chummed the waters with pieces of fish and as we drifted, the plume expanded, hopefully attracting some sharks. Is, is that like a bobber? Hey, we're, exactly, we are, we are basically fishing on the pond only everything is really big scale. <laughs> so there's our bobber. We stayed in this spot for a while, but had no luck and set a course farther southeast. 
the deep one? Uh, let's make that the shallow, far one. So you can see the buoy's going down, and now the buoy's moving to the right. And our first shark was hooked. The battle was on. Our first shark was a fighter, nearly surfacing, then diving back down into the depths of Rhode Island Sound. Pretty, huh? It's always amazing to see these sharks just appear out of nothing, you know? There we go. Hello. Actually has a hook coming out of its mouth on this side. See it? Yep. See the wire? So what we usually try to do is try to release, the, you know, get that hook out of the shark as well a little yep. bit, and then we're going to tag it right there. So you can see it didn't even move. Find right. out first. That, that other hook is buried in its mouth. We're not going to be able to do anything about that one. You might be able to clip it off, Johnny. You think so? Yeah, I think you can. All right. And he's free to go. And he's free to go. So he's tagged. There he goes. Swims away. He's a lot away. bigger than I thought he was. Yeah, I think he's closer to eight and a half. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. So that was a male, eight and a half foot male blue shark. Probably 200 pounds, a little more than 200. We cut the hook in half. That other hawk, that other piece will literally just fall out. What kind of tag did you put on it? That tag is one where we will now fill out a card which will say when we caught it, where we caught it, the sex of it, the size of it, the condition of it. We'll note the fact it had a hook in its mouth. Um, and then we'll send that card into the National Marine Fisheries Service. It's a technology program that's going around for a long, long time. Um, and there have been over 200,000 sharks tagged in that program. But one was not enough. For the tags to be valuable to researchers, they need to be on as many sharks as possible. More sharks tagged means more data. So the lines go back in the water. Until the clicking of a reel goes off and it's all hands on deck. Hopefully that was a flash. Research volunteer Paul Clappin reeled the seven footer blue shark in. Logged on to the next one. Thank you. There it comes. Our best, best catch of the day. But not everything we reeled in was a shark. Uh, this is a mylar balloon with no coloration on it, so it's been in the water a long, long time. They are everywhere out here. I mean, water bottles tend to sink, especially if they don't have a cap on them. You know, we don't seem not to say that they're not a problem, but uh, you know what we witness out here mostly is is the mylar balloons, which is too bad. After setting up the reels again, John and Paul decided to put the 12 News team to the test. It was T.J. Del Santo's turn to face the sharks. And TJ's catch came with a surprise. Yeah. Looks like a bike. Look at that. You <sighs> see that on a female, but it's a male. One strong shark. Pretty cool. I feel the power. We were running out of chum. We just needed one more shark to bite. 
it was my turn. Uh, looks like tail. Yeah. Looks like he's tail wrapped. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful close. Discoloration on his chin from the bottom point. Okay, we're there. There's John. There it is. My forearms are extremely sore. Um, I could feel it sh just shooting straight down towards the bottom of the ocean. Um, and it was, I thought I was going to go overboard. <laughs> but that was exhilarating. Absolutely. While Adriana recovered, and before we set a course back to South Kingstown, we met up with another boat. The crew was also conducting research. Dr. Josh Moyer from the Atlantic Shark Institute is studying the bite dynamics of sharks. He went swimming with the sharks and took this amazing underwater video that day. Don't try this on your own. He's trained on how to interact with sharks in the water. <laughs> 